Hi everybody, Bill here, still here. Forgive the voice, I've got another cold, so I've got a bit of a hoarse voice at the moment. Uh, plus I had the uh, COVID booster and the flu jab yesterday, went with Helen, we had that done. Uh, and uh, it's uh, all sort of taking its toll a little bit. Oh, what a day today. I went to see Danko the surgeon today at uh, the Princess Royal Hospital with Helen. And uh, we went down there this morning uh, for the consultation to decide whether or not to go ahead with this reversal. Um, I've been agonising over it. I've been going to and fro in my head, not sure what to do. Do you remember I spoke to my uh, old school friend, the uh, very well respected colorectal surgeon, who suggested there were three things that went against me in this. Uh, the first thing is uh, the length of time it's been since surgery. And in fact, now it's nine months uh, normally you'd expect it within three to six months. It's been nine months. The longer it goes on, the harder it is to get a successful reversal. Uh, the second thing is the fact that I had radiotherapy and so therefore the tissue is a little bit weak. And also I had the leak the uh, um, after the first bit of surgery. And that sort of indicates that maybe the material down there is not very good. I don't know. I've been agonising about what I think is the right way forward. As I say, I've always been honest with you. I, I don't want to be incontinent and my quality of life will not be good if I am not able to go to the toilet uh, or not able to leave the toilet. I'll certainly be able to go to the toilet. Um, no one wants that, do they? Anyway, I went in today with an open mind, but I did a bit of research this morning. And uh, from my own research, I found this report on the Internet that was done in um, uh, in this country, in the UK. And there was about 170 people who'd had a low anterior resection, the same as I've had. And uh, it was the success rate of reversal operations. Basically, it's a one in four chance that it will go wrong. It will have complications. But it's exacerbated in my case because I am also one that's had a delayed time and I had the leak before. So I'm pessimistic about it. In fact, Danko said, when we walked in, he said, right, OK, well, we're going for reversal then. And I said, well, I'm not so sure. He said that I'm the most pessimistic patient he's ever had in this situation. Because I think from their point of view, they see scans, they see what they think is relatively healthy tissue. Oh, and by the way, that biopsy that was taken last time when I had the end, uh, the sigmoidoscopy, I think I told you it had come back as... Uh, as uh, nothing to worry about, well, that is the case. And that's a big uh, a big weight off my mind. I said, well, why is there inflammation at the join? And uh, apparently it's like scar tissue. So it's where the tubes have healed up. It's basically scar tissue. So that sort of makes sense. I thought maybe it would just become inflamed a bit like a, an ulcer or something like that, but maybe not. So Danko thought I'd naturally just go for a reversal and I, I expressed my opinion. I, they, I had one of the colorectal nurses there, Rose was there, and Laura, the, one of the stoma nurses, she was there too. Gave a lot of good advice because we were asking lots of questions about well, uh, what it would be like if I had a, col colos a colostomy instead of a, an ileostomy uh, as a permanent thing. And we know that. We've been through this before, haven't we? It would be better because it, your body absorbs more liquid by the time it gets to a colostomy uh, and therefore there's less chance of dehydration. It's, it's healthier. Um, my big problem, as I said to them, was, I mean, what I enjoy doing, what I like to do in my life is, is uh, I like to eat and I like to drink. Uh, I like to drink alcohol. I like to not worry about the effects of that. And, and if I am sort of running for the toilet a lot, I'm going to be reluctant to have those drinks and enjoy myself and it will ruin social gatherings. And I don't want to be like that. Anyway, look, the net result is that uh, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for the reversal. Uh, I'm going to have a scan at the beginning of November, uh, just a final scan, a CT scan, just to check everything is OK. Uh, then it looks like I'm going for the surgery. There will be a reversal. Uh, I, Danko said if, if it is unsuccessful, and that the definition, this is important, what is the definition of an unsuccessful uh, reversal? In medical terms, you see, they consider a successful reversal where there's no leak. 
where there's no infection, there's no sort of blood poisoning as a result of it. But of course, that's different from what the patient might consider to be a success. Like for me, a success would be if I am able to get back to a normal habit of going to the toilet uh, and not be running for the toilet every few minutes. I don't want that. And um, so Danko said that if after a couple of months I am unhappy about the way things are, then he will be able to get me back in and then I can have a colostomy, which will be a permanent bag for life. Now, I said, well, hold on a minute. The NHS waiting times and all that, that's not going to happen, is it? I'm not going to be back in there that quickly. It could be a year or something. And he said that he manages his own list of operations and he's assured me that he would be able to do that. So I'm trusting you, Danko. I'm trusting you because I'm still not confident it's going to work out. And if I am unable to leave the house after a couple of months' time and I need to change my life and get back to that colostomy, um, which will improve the quality of my life, get that surgery done, then I need you to do that quickly. If you can't, then I don't know. We're going to have to go down a different route, private even. I mean, I don't know how much that would cost, but... You know what's money when when it's your quality of life uh anyway hopefully that won't happen hopefully it'll all be successful and hopefully i'll buck the trend certainly the buck the trend of my luck anyway and, and i will end up not being one of the one in four that it goes wrong for but i'll be in the 75 percent where it doesn't go wrong um okay so that's your update Oh, yes, that's right. One other thing. I said, well, if I have this colostomy, then is that the bit where you have to sew up my bum, take my bum out, the anus, you know, get rid of that? And he said, uh, no, uh, that isn't going to happen, which was a, a surprise to me because uh, I thought that was a natural part of the, the surgery. And he said, no, that's quite a major bit of surgery, that, and uh, they wouldn't do it. Apparently, it, it's, it can have more um, side effects, like bad effects, than it does by not um, removing that section of your body. So I will have, whatever happens, whether it's a reversal or whether it's a colostomy, I will have a normal bottom, Well, that, which is nice. Because I know a lot of people do actually have those, uh, their, their backsides, uh, their anuses removed, or their ani. Is that the plural of an anus? I don't know, ani. And what do they do with them? The mind boggles. Anyway, that's it. I will keep you updated. And uh, oh, the sun's shining through today. Do I feel happier? Yeah, I think I do. I feel happier. Because if I didn't go for this reversal, I'd never know. I'd always look back and think, oh, maybe it would have worked. So I think it's the right way forward, don't you? Take care. Bye for now.